Well, howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, I have totally given up on my network. No, really, I have. In fact, I've given up so much on my network that I've deleted the domain controller and decided to start from scratch. Yes, I've pretty much lost my mind on this one, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I can. Now, I thought I had the be-all, end-all great idea to put my domain controller on my Synology NAS, uh, but I was never, I mean, it was stable, it ran okay, but it just ate up so much of the resources of the Synology NAS, it really didn't leave me room to do other things on it, if you know what I mean. Now, uh, I have these uh, thin client, these uh, HP T610, I think, thin clients laying around. And they've got a, a they've only got a dual core MD processor in them, uh, and I think they have four four or eight gig of RAM. Uh, we'll look here in a minute, uh, but enough RAM to run Windows Server 2019. And uh, keep in mind, all I do is use it as a domain controller. Sometimes I edit group policies on it. Uh, I run DNS and DHCP on this server, and I just like having a domain to log into. It just makes things a little more uh, easier for me. So that's why I run a domain controller, but I just thought these would be the perfect little unit. They only draw about 15 to 20 watts with a running full bore. And I thought, well, even though it's not a rack mount unit, it is small enough to where it could go on a rack and be tucked away. So that's what I've done today. So I'll show you some uh, video of me installing it on this unit. And then we'll come back once it's installed and I'll tell you the additional configuration I had to do. There you go, boys and girls. Here's what I'm installing my domain controller on. No, not the cup of tea. But this little T, the T620 HP Thin Client. It's got 4 gig of RAM. It's got an AMD dual core processor in there. It's a real powerhouse of a server. I put an SSD drive in here, 256 gig, and all told, at full bore, this thing consumes about 20 watts of power. I'm tired of having a virtual, or I'm tired of having a virtual domain controller, so I've decided to just dedicate this little box, which is doing nothing else, to the domain controller needs of my limited domain controller needs of my network. So that's what we're doing today. I'm busy installing Windows Server 2019 on there. I'm also now doing the updates. As you can see, Windows Update is running. It's In fact, it's ready for a restart. So what I'm going to do is get, my, uh, get this all installed, and then I will come back and take some footage of me getting the actual domain controller set up so you can see how we're going to do this from scratch. I think it'll be an exciting, uh, well maybe not exciting, but it'll definitely be an informative video. So let's go. So there you go. The the AMD G T56N processor is being pretty much, you know, maximized its use. Our memory is good. I mean this should be more than powerful enough to run as a domain controller, run DNS, run DHCP. Uh, if it'll run on a virtual machine, it'll run on something like this. And This is nice and compact, and I can put it away, hide it in a spot, and it'll very seldom ever get used, and it'll ensure that uh, I don't break something in the future while playing with something that should be in a lab environment, but I digress. So I'm going to go up here to Manage, and I'm going to tell a uh, server manager, go to Server Manager Properties, and do not start it automatically at login because you can see it takes quite some time for it to get up and running. What I am going to do is I am going to use it to go to add roles and features. And what we want to do is make this to uh, make this unit a domain controller. Now, I've already named it Gandalf and I've already given it a hard coded IP address of 5.1 because it is going to be the uh, domain controller for our. Uh, our local land and you'll I think you'll appreciate it here in a second so I'm gonna click on next so again it's important you name it 
now before you promote it and make sure that you have uh, your IP address hard coded in there and I'm going to go ahead and do Active Directory uh, Domain Services I'm going to add the features and then a little wizard will start walking me through it. Now I could use Azure which is basically Microsoft's online version of Active Directory. I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and click on install. Now this is probably going to take a little bit of time because like I said this is not the world's fastest unit and you can see it's being put under quite a load. But uh, we'll let this run and I'll try to keep track of the time and let you know how how long it actually took. All right, so uh, it looks like it finished. It says the uh, uh, installation succeeded, but it needs to run the uh, DC promo or the uh, promote the server to a domain controller. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to add a new forest, and we're going to call this forest. Um, Mid Earth. So it'll be Middle Earth. We're going to add a new forest. Uh, we're going to base everything on this, on Lord of the Rings or the Tolkien series of books. So our domain will be Middle Earth and then we'll have different names for different uh, uh, components, servers, etc. Just kind of want to make it fun and whimsical. So, sorry, dot local. Um, <clears throat> get rid of that extra period, dot local. Right? So midearth.local, right? See if it likes that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to leave the forest functional level and the windows functional level at server 2016. Uh, and then I'm going to put in my recovery password. And I'm going to click on next. It's going to be a global catalog and a domain name server. All right. Uh, we don't need to create a DNS delegation. Uh, at least I don't think we do uh, it should take care of that automatically so I'm going to click on next it's going to give us our NetBIOS domain name so that's the domain name prior to them using Active Directory which would be basically the domain name minus the dot local at the end of it so it'll call it mid-earth we'll click on next it's going to create these three folders uh, to store the database for the Active Directory and then it's going to go ahead and do all this. Now, if you're a script person, you could uh, save this. You could uh, use this feature to modify the script, put variables in here, or have it even ask you questions and create your own little uh, wizard. Or you could just use this uh, moving forward to create your Active Directory domains up to you. But it, it's, it's a rather advanced feature, or can be. So I'm just going to click on Next. It's going to verify the prerequisites. It's going to install the DNS server, uh, do all that, go through all that stuff. As long as nothing is in red, it'll give you a green check mark. It just these are warning messages you need to be aware of: uh, the cryptography algorithms compared and delegations and etc. I'm just going to click on install. We'll let this run. And again, it's giving me a little warning. It's not a criticality. It's not something that will stop me from installing. So I'm trying to do this kind of real time and then I'll speed up the boring stuff just to give you an idea of how long it takes. I think it took five minutes to install Active Directory uh, services. And then this is taking, oh, I don't know, taking a couple of minutes so far. Not that long. I just decided to do a clean, uh, clean break from uh, mcs.local. I wanted to kind of rejigger my memory on how this is done and uh, I wanted to reset up uh, there's gonna be a lot of things associated with this video uh, I'm gonna basically take you from scratch like I am now with how I set up my my network here locally at the house 
and uh, how I'm going to use that moving forward. So uh, this is just part one. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be installing a new firewall. We're gonna be doing a bunch of other stuff uh, in a series of videos, and I'm gonna bring y'all along for the ride. Why not, right? Uh, now, in prior to this, I did copy my, and it's warning me I'm gonna be signed out. I did copy my DNS and my DHCP server settings, so that I don't have to create all that from scratch again. Uh, that would be a huge pain in the butt. And hopefully I've done it correctly so that I can re-import it into my new setup. All right, so we'll let the server reboot. And in addition, I like to run a Windows DHCP server for the 5 subnet for my Active Directory domain network. Just makes things easier for me. Uh, so I've installed that on there as well. Uh, and uh, it's in the rack. It's up and running. Uh, and I got to say, I'm very happy with the performance. It's working fine. Now I did had have to set up some forwarders in the DNS. The way I have my DNS set up for my my network is that I use my Windows server as my DNS primary DNS server for at both Active Directory and for domain uh, access or for DNS access outside of my network across the gateway. So it not only resolves internal IPs but it does the external as well. I just find it easier to use Windows DNS server and then set up a forwarder for anything it can't resolve or a couple of forwarders and I use uh, OpenDNS and I use uh, Google right now. I did have my uh, DNS pointing to the the uh, the uh, the pie hole blocker DNS. There's a guy out there that runs a service for that but sometimes it doesn't get some people's obscure mail servers and I notice I have delivery problems with my email. I run my own mail server. So it's very critical I have correct DNS uh, or I have DNS that can be relied on to find some of these vague mail servers or mail relays or or whatever they're using these days. So um, I tend to go with these two and just deal with some of the ads. Uh, and maybe maybe I'll do something with Pi-hole later. But for right now, it just works fine the way it is. So there you go, YouTube. Uh, it's true, you, you don't need a whole lot of power to set up an Active Directory domain controller, especially not on a little Windows home lab like you and I might be running. Um, so, you know, give it some consideration. I have these units laying around. I hate computer equipment that's not going to work uh, or being put to work. And I frankly, I hate to virtualize the domain controller. It just it adds a level of pain I don't need. Um, it complicates things. And... You've seen me set up domain controller before in all kinds of situations, but I think, you know, this unit is small enough. It's just sitting there next to my Synology NAS on the top of my rack, and, you know, it's not bothering anybody. Uh, and it works fine. It puts out very little heat and uses very little power. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please give us a thumbs up down below. If you liked the video, leave your comments down in the comments section. Donate. If you're so inclined, PayPal, Patreon, and uh, the uh, YouTube subscribe or join button. $2 a month recurring every month uh, just to show your support. Thanks again for coming to see us. And please don't forget that we'll see you on the other side.